Hello and a very good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers who are joining me live in this Facebook and YouTube interaction. I'm back again, and this time I'll be speaking about a particular sequelae, as they term this particular, you know, disease that many people who have recovered from COVID-19 are, you know, experiencing. And this particular disorder or the ailment is called lung fibrosis. So. We will be speaking about lung fibrosis, but before that, let me give you an introduction of the entire topic altogether. So, the doctors from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences or the AIMS have now recommended lung transplant for two patients who have recovered from COVID-19 because of extensive fibrosis, which is a condition where lung tissues you know, harden with uh, lesions caused as the infection heals. So even after the COVID-19 patient recovers, the damage that is dealt by COVID-19 during the time that he experiences uh, the infection has reportedly left a permanent dent on the lungs of these patients. And the country's first lung transplant in a COVID-19 patient was performed in Chennai in the end of August. And while most people recover fully from COVID-19, some experience persistent symptoms like breathlessness, fatigue, erratic heartbeat, gastrointestinal problems and also muscle and even joint pains for several weeks. A few develop, you know, irreversible cardiovascular and even respiratory damage. And if you look at the available data, about 60 to 80 percent of the individuals who have recovered from COVID-19 may have some form of a sequelae, a condition that is caused by a disease and that lasts even after a patient recovers. So this particular sequelae can either be mild in the form of a fatigue and body aches, but it can also be very serious in the form of individuals requiring to be on long-term oxygen therapy. And even, you know, psychiatric disorders are uh, as a result of not just the infection, but the lockdown and also social isolation imposed to prevent the spread of the infection. While many people are coming across psychiatric disorders, some who have recovered from COVID-19 have come across many respiratory ailments such as the lung fibrosis which we are going to discuss today. So to give us more insights on what lung fibrosis is all about and also to tell us about how to stay, uh, stay safe from COVID-19 and from this particular sequel, we have with us Dr. Sitesh Roy. Many thanks for joining me in this live interaction Dr. Sitesh Roy and my first question to you today is that you know there are cases of uh, COVID-19 recovered patients developing lung fibrosis. So, could you please explain to our viewers about what this sequel is all about? So, Deepak, what happens in COVID-19 is when a person develops COVID-19 pneumonia, mm -hmm. they experience a thickening of the lining of the alveoli, which are the air sacs or the air spaces in which oxygen and carbon dioxide gets exchanged in our lungs and it's almost like a glue-like substance that forms in this area along with inflammation along with secretions and for most people in a span of about four to six weeks the covid pneumonia seems to disappear and the lungs come back to normal but in a subset of people which tend to be elderly individuals above the age of 60 or 65, people who have a history of smoking or alcohol consumption, people who have a history of having previous lung disease sometimes, and even in people who, are, who have otherwise been healthy, there are uh, sequelae and consequences where there is scarring in the lungs. And this scarring, much like if you get a cut on your hand, and when the wound heals, it may leave a little thickened scar. Imagine such multiple thickened scar inside the lungs where oxygen exchange then does not occur normally and naturally. And the person develops ongoing breathlessness, um, difficulty in doing day-to-day -day activities, may even require oxygen for their functioning. And when this occurs, we almost see a picture like a disease that we have known for a while that's called interstitial lung disease. And interestingly, the drug that we use to treat interstitial lung disease seems to help some of these patients who have lung fibrosis. But when the fibrosis goes beyond a certain level, and if the individual is otherwise truly healthy, then even lung transplantation becomes a necessity for such cases. Also, doctor, now, like you mentioned, the risk is high among those who smoke and drink. So, what kind of a you know damage that 
lung fibrosis inflicts for the smokers and those who consume alcohol so what ends up happening is you have to realize in any infection there is inflammation that occurs in the tissue that is fighting the infection so in this case the area of inflammation where the covid 19 has entered the cells and the body's immune system is fighting it off the war is going on in the air sacs in the air tubes in the tissue surrounding the air sacs what's called the lung parenchyma now for a person who uh, smokes and consumes alcohol more than the regular occasional social drinking on a more regular basis they already have inflammation in their body and in their lungs and i think that it's a consequence of existing inflammation added on to with the covid-19 sars-cov-2 virus in fact infection causes the inflammation is why the outcomes tend to be worse at least this is some of the data that has come from italy germany and other parts of the world mm-hmm. where having these risk factors turned out to be the reason why the person's lung lesions on a high resolution ct scan were not resolving as expected in a span of several weeks after recovery from the infection though as i said there have been perfectly healthy people who had no risk factors also who have unfortunately developed this fibrosis in several cases also doctor now what are the kind of complications that a person who is suffering from lung fibrosis you know encounters mm-hmm. usually So the issues that a person with lung fibrosis would face is basically limitation of their day-to-day activities because lung fibrosis can lead to breathlessness sometimes a dry cough and with it difficulty in so even doing their day-to-day routine in terms of taking a bath taking a shower going to work walking around taking a routine exercise break any of these things can become hard if the lung fibrosis is very significant and clearly a person with lung fibrosis because the lungs are scarred or injured and then healing in what we call a overzealous way where the healing has gone overboard and has formed fibrotic patches mm-hmm. these people at risk for getting infections more than a person whose lungs are healthy and their immunity is normal so after all of this oxygen dependency becomes an issue and if oxygen dependency and the anti fibrotic drugs are not working as well then the whole issue ends up with having no option but to be on a lung transplant list which hopefully is few and far patients between but still a risk that we need to be aware of because the people with the most severe lung, uh, outcome so those who were in the icu those who required a mechanical ventilator for the longest period of time these are the kind of people who tend to have the maximum damage to their lung tissue and hence the scarring and fibrosis also doctor is this you know uh, lung fibrosis syndrome or the ailment is it a permanent damage or is there a cure to this particular ailment So interestingly very recently Deepak we have figured out that there is a system in the body called the bradykinin system which is a very important system and this system controls the exudation of fluid okay. from our normal blood vessels into our tissues and there is a condition called hereditary angioedema in which bradykinin antagonists are being used for treatment So there are certain drugs as i said once the fibrosis has set in then there is a drug called pirifenidone that is used for treatment and for the fibrosis not to set in it turns out that these bradykinin antagonists can be invaluable in even preventing the problem is these drugs are not available in india they are very expensive and they are given as injections largely and uh, as we learn more about the disease hopefully we will have access to these to even prevent the lung fibrosis in the first place so doctor like we have you know different stages in cancer like if you reach the stage 4 it is quite dangerous does lung fibrosis also have you know certain stages that after which you can't treat it Uh, yes deepak in uh, uh, what is called ipf or ild interstitial pulmonary fibrosis and interstitial lung disease there are stages that are given uh, there are guidelines on these things uh, specifically for covid 19 people have largely followed the existing guidelines 
and this has to do with the extent of damage to the lungs mm-hmm. and the kind of limitations that it is causing for the individual so is it only shortness of breath when they try to walk fast or is it shortness of breath when they even walk a short distance or is it shortness of breath when they are even sitting and laying down so all of these along with the picture that we see on the high resolution ct scan of the chest and combine all these factors together and their oxygen levels at room air and with oxygen all of these tell us what the severity and hence the grading or the classification of the lung fibrosis is also doctor i just wanted to ask you one last question so lung fibrosis is can be caused even normally without a covid-19 infection or is it a sequela of covid-19 lung fibrosis can be caused due to many different reasons uh, it has been known to be caused by certain very strong pollutants in the air it has been known to be caused by autoimmune diseases it has been known to be caused by other infections uh including SARS and MERS in the past have been known to cause some permanent lung damage in some people so this is not something new and as i said over the years with the growing uh, urbanization and high pollution levels and everything and also the infections respiratory infections viruses we have been seeing a lot more uh, interstitial or uh, lung fibrosis and interstitial lung disease in general in a country like india which was not the case probably 10 or 20 years ago mm. so covid is adding to that list and number unfortunately because that's what is happening and and really uh, before i end what i would like to say if you just go down from head to toe as you rightly said from anxiety and depression mm-hmm. to loss of smell loss of taste which has been occurring for months together in some people to people who have even due to the micro thrombi or the micro emboli which is tiny blood clots that occur in arteries and veins in the lungs people have even recently there have been cases where people have lost their vision due to a retinal artery occlusion or blockage due to this micro thrombi and you take it down to the heart people have had myocarditis they have heart attacks they have stroke you take it down to the lungs we speak about fibrosis take it to the kidneys people have had a uh, chronic renal disease uh, developing after covid-19 and you have obviously spoken about fatigue body pain myalgia tiredness all of these things so this is really something that should wake people up to take immense care of themselves and prevent the infection by doing all the precautions that we have been saying in every single conversation we had you know wearing the face mask very sincerely above your nose covering your mouth making sure you are using hand washing hand sanitizing keeping physical distancing this is so very important till we finally some day have an effective vaccine uh, and getting care and treatment at the earliest sign of disease right doctor thank you for joining me with all those details and also your message was loud and clear to all our viewers primary care is very important make sure that you are wearing a face mask at all times whenever you are stepping out because these uh, the only way that you know these particles or the viruses can enter your lungs is through your nose and also your respiratory tract so in order to keep that uh, particular respiratory tract you know away and clear from viruses you will have to ensure that you wear a face mask and do not ignore social distancing norms and also hand hygiene because we often touch our face to either correct our hair or move our glasses or to wipe our face so in order to not uh, you know develop all of these kind of ailments and complications make sure that you follow all the uh, instructions that were given out by dr sitesh roy and also uh, the protocols that we have been emphasizing in each of our conversations day by day so by doing all of these you can at least make sure that you are safe and also your loved ones are also safe by you uh, spreading the awareness among your society members so follow all these safety precautions and stay safe until next time see you and take care thank you for watching this live interaction